Okay, so day three of the Rugby World Cup um, opens with Japan versus Chile. A uh, very entertaining game. It was refreshing uh, to see both sides want to run the ball more than kick the ball. There was not as much kicking in this game. Uh, it was more running. And you can pay, place that down to Japan and Chile's sevens programmes having an impact. Uh, the heat, obviously, over 35 degrees in Toulouse. Um, the Chileans, <laughs> look, it's their first World Cup, but there's a reason why they have developed so well in the last decade and it's firstly uh the america's rugby championship please bring that back world rugby please uh and secondly they've heavily invested in their sevens program so heat conditions like this and lots of space hey sevens you you, you play with space you play in, at, at speed so their sevens program has helped with their fitness um, and their speed of play. Uh, Japan, their sevens program, because they hosted the, the Olympics for uh, back in Tokyo, and they had to have a, a team competitive enough in sevens to play in the Olympic. Again, heavily invested in that. Now, the game itself was entertaining. The, uh, the, the, the Chilean backs, they have some skill about them, and they're big backs. They're not like just your amateurs. The, these are professional, semi-professional players. Uh, Rodrigo Fernandez, whose try gets them to the World Cup when they beat the US, um, that's that's great support play from Aizala, the, the fullback, who's had a fantastic game, run himself into the ground. That's great support play. That is great support play. They make the line break. Um, they, they, they break the Japanese line. Great support play. And uh, Bavella, the winger, converts. Uh, they got a bit lucky with that with the pass and the Japanese player knocking it and then kicking it through. But Fernandez, uh, he's, a, he's a fly half who wants to run more than kick. He's a running fly half, which is refreshing. However, the resulting kickoff, they don't claim the ball properly. Japan get hold of the ball and then Fakatava uh, scores his first of two tries on eight minutes and Matsuda converts. And then it's a bit of a ding-dong. It's both sides. It's a battle. It's a battle in the scrum, line out and in the loose. Neither side can truly gain dominance in the forward pack, um, which was refreshing. The breakdown was entertaining because both sides were turning each other over. Chile came here to play. Japan were in a test match and Japan were stop and start in this game. They had moments of brilliance and then they had that stop and start. The handling lets them down. Their defence, too many missed tackles, lets them down. Chile gave them a game. Really entertaining. But then the Dittus, Matthias Dittus yellow card, there was three yellows in this game. One of them we will discuss in more depth than the other two. This, yeah, this is a bog run-of-the-mill yellow card. It's a late tackle and it's a cannonball tackle, as you'll call it in rugby league. He aims for the knee. I'm surprised that wasn't upgraded to a red, considering that later in the game that Japanese player doesn't come back out for the second half. Heavily strapped knee. The ball's gone two, three seconds before he drills him in the knee. Uh, and it is a late tackle. He's dipped his head. Now, yes, you can't have a go for tackle height, but timing, the ball went two, three seconds earlier, and where he hits him, uh, and he does injure the knee. Uh, lucky to only get a yellow, in my opinion. But at the same time, I think it's fair he gets a yellow, but I have seen them given as red because there's a resulting injury resulting to the opposition player. But that's that's not really a controversial yellow. They deal with that yellow particularly well until uh, Naki Bula's try on 30 minutes. They, they dealt with that quite well. They had actually dealt with being down... 14 players and you can put that down to their sevens background a lot of these players the sevens with the fitness and and, and the space and, and less players on the field the sevens is very open uh and and i don't think the chileans mind being down to 14 players because they did it twice in this game um so yeah they unfortunately right at the end of that yellow card period there's the second Japanese try. The Japanese did take advantage of the yellow card periods in the first half to, to establish a 21-7 lead at half time. The Martin Sigrin yellow. Now, England fans with Tom Curry last night after just three minutes for a similar incident, which gets upgraded to a red. This stays as a yellow. Now, where's the consistency? Now, I think where some people might say it shouldn't be a yellow is the, the majority of contacts actually made uh, shoulder to chest. So the Japanese player conks him in the chest it's the whiplash effect where the head contact with head contact is made if Sigrun the Chilean captain ducks into that tackle we're discussing the Japanese player um getting possibly a yellow or red card for leading with the elbow of the shoulder which we saw in the Six Nations this is where I think world rugby have got this area wrong it is an accidental head clash the tackle itself is a, is a he's trying to make a, a choke tackle basically safely at speed, um, with with the with the opposition player coming at speed, this is an attempt to hold him up, make a choke tackle, form them all. 
is a textbook choke tackle where the whiplash and the force of contact with the Japanese player coming in at pace has led to head-on-head -head contact. As I say, if Sikran dips his shoulder in, he's getting a shoulder or an elbow to the head, and then we're having the discussion of the Japanese player potentially leading with the shoulder or the elbow to the defender. And we saw, I forget which England, I think it was Malins got sent off in the Six Nations for England because the opposition player in, in preparing for the tackle has lowered his tackle height, which you're told to do, below the neck uh, and below the shoulders. And because he's got his elbow and shoulder slightly further forward, he clocks him in the head and he's the one getting sent. So I think well, rugby have got to look at this accidental contact and go, maybe just a penalty sufficing, maybe, maybe we... we, we They've been reactionary. Now, Tom Curry gets sent off last night because they upgrade it. I'm not, as I've said, and I've, I've had a disagreement. Oh, I want to say disagreement, a discussion in the comments section. I won't call it a disagreement, different point of view. With um, my match review of England, a viewer said he disagreed with the off-field upgrading, the downgrading. I think leave that till post-match. I think Dittus potentially gets upgraded to a, a, a lengthier ban than Sigrun. Personally, I think Tom Curry's red will be either turned back to a yellow, personally, because if if Sigrun's is only a yellow, then Tom Curry's has to be a yellow. And the, the way you, you look at it is that, like, yes, the opposition player last night has caught the ball and is coming down to ground and has just landed on the ground. And that is part of the mitigation was the player was coming out of the air. In my opinion, both were accidental. I don't think either player has gone in to smash the opposition player in the head. And if Curry and Sigrun, in this case, drop their head, we're then discussing the, the opposition player, the player in possession, potentially getting sent, because we saw with uh, Malins for England and Six Nations, for leading with an elbow or shoulder, when in, in reality he's just bracing for contact. So World Rugby have definitely got this one wrong. I think, with this rule variation. And there'll be those who disagree and say, that I see yellow head contact. And yes, I do I do honestly agree. We need to get dirty head contact out of the game with swinging arms, deliberate shoulders to the head, stamps on the head when it's a ruck and a maul, bad clear out. Absolutely. This is not foul play. This is this is a, an accidental clash of heads. I completely agree with Sir Clive Woodward um, and Sergio Parise at halftime on the ITV coverage saying, this is this is not, this, this is, we're going down a bad slope here where we're, possibly killing the game by being reactionary with rule changes but moving on from that because i'll be here all day uh Fakataba scores his second try um just not long after sigrun's off so again japan take advantage of that yellow card period that is half time it's 21 7 now not long into the second half dylan riley gets sent for japan outside centre for a deliberate knock-on, and then he makes a tackle uh, after making the deliberate knock-on, which uh, uh, affects the attempt of a, of a clean line break by the Chileans. Who, bear in mind, the guy he's trying to tackle is a, is a lock, and he's running people over. Lock, locks aren't meant to run like that and skin wingers and centres, by the way. Uh, this is, again, that Chilean sevens background. Um, however, within a couple of minutes and several phases later, Alfonso Escobar, brother of Diego Escobar, the hooker. Yeah, there's some Escobars playing. Let that sink in. Very South American name. Um, scores his try um, from resulting phases of play. Uh, they obviously, you know, uh, go go back, look at that yellow card. They, they get the line out. They build phases, rolling wall, and uh, Escobar just, yeah. That's that. Again, this is where Japan couldn't dominate the forward battle because both forward packs are quick and mobile. They want to get the ball in and out quick, in and out quick. And it really was a proper battle. Uh, as that try, the stadium erupts. The conversion is missed by Bevella. That conversion goes over. That puts a little bit more pressure on Japan because now it's that losing bonus point, winning bonus point kind of situation. And bonus points in this group with how England and Argentina played last night are going to prove crucial. I think that's where Japan have got that winning bonus point uh, with the try with Michael Leach getting his try at the post. That's the bonus point try. Uh, that could prove crucial. Japan were not fully at the races, but they weren't terrible. But they were in a test match by a very committed Chilean side. Now, as the game was, whereas on the last 10 minutes, uh, Nak Nakamura and, and Dernis, the Warner Derns get their tries, which puts a bit of bit of a cushion on it. I, I think it flatters Japan a little bit, the 42-12 scoreline. The game was closer than that in reality. The yellow cards have had a, an impact in the end with fatigue. But I think the Chileans don't mind having a player off because of their sevens background. 
Look, Santiago and Chile, the, cap, the capital where they play their home test matches, is at altitude. So not only do they have a good sevens programme, they play at altitude. Not as high as Ecuador with Quito altitude, but they, they play in the Andes. Like a lot of these guys from from Santiago and the other the other you know towns and cities in Chile, they are from altitude, which has an, an impact on your lung capacity and your aerobic respiration. <laughs> So their fitness levels, they were still tackling right up till the end. They were still willing to run right up until the end. They put an 80-minute shift in. Japan, because of their now reinvestment in that sevens program because of the Olympics, and they want to qualify for their next Olympics as well, their fitness has massively improved. They were always a, they were always a fit side, even before Eddie Jones takes over. And for me, this was a, possibly the best game of the tournament so far because both sides were happier to run the ball than kick. They were happier to run from deep, which is what we want. We want to see running rugby rather than kick tennis all the time, which some teams like to do. So it was refreshing to watch. It was a good game. Yellow cards, only one of them is really controversial. The first yellow card, I think, could be upgraded to retrospectively, which I think they should do after the game because of the injury to the opposition player. The other two yellow cards, I think the Sigrun one, very similar to Tom Curry. We're going to debate that controversy throughout this tournament. I think World Rugby, are, I think, got that one wrong with the rule changes. I think we, we need to... That referee with common sense here, I don't think, I mean, accidental head contact. If we were to do every single head contact in the game, if we were to look at every ruck, every more, every tackle, every clear out, we'll have no players left on the pitch. It would be like touch rugby by the end, like fully uncontested scrums. So I think while well, rugby have really got that rule change wrong, personally, foul play always should be called out. But uh, Sigrun's yellow, Curry's yellow update for red. We are, we are going to be here. Um, there's there's going to be more. Every single game so far has had at least one yellow. Uh, we had three today. We had two in the Argentina-England game, one upgraded. There has not been a game where every player has stayed on the field unless they're substituted off. There has not been a game yet where all 30 players that start and all 30 players that finish are on the field at the same time. I, this is where I think World Rugby have definitely... Yes, we want to speed the game up. Yes, there's a couple like the deliberate knock-on, which, you know, that is cynical. Uh, I think we saw one. Did we see one yesterday? I think we did. Uh, repeat infringements. We have one that these ones are, 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 are you know, a professional foul the, uh, in the uh, Romania game against Ireland. There's three of these yellow cards which you're going to get every now and then in a test match. You know, those cynical ones where there's a deliberate, you know, deliberate crossing, deliberate taking a player off the ball, deliberate slapping the ball. Other, those kind of, you know, coach killers take a yellow for the team ones. But. The amount of yellows and now reds we're seeing, I think I do fear this could, you know, in the latter stages, like a knockout game or that final pool game. It's going to be in the final. It could overshadow what could be a fantastic tournament. This game was fantastically entertaining, even with the yellows. And we can discuss the, the, the controversy over the yellows and the up potential upgrades, downgrades uh, in due course. But there we go. That's Japan, Chile. We've got South Africa, Scotland and Wales, Fiji to come up to. More really titanic struggles. I think they're going to be entertaining as well. I think we're going to see a lot of yellows in these games. With South Africa, Scotland and, and Wales, Fiji, I think there's going to be a, a potential reds in there with how those teams play the game. Uh there's going to be some some controversy, I have no doubt. But at the same time, tasty encounters to look forward to. Fiji, I think, against Wales. I think there's the potential for Fiji to win that game and win that game well. Wales are like England, not coming in on the on the on the background of good form and good news domestic in the domestic game. So, so that plays out. But for me, for now, thank you very much for watching. I'll have some more content for you very very soon.